today what we're going to be covering are the main parts of putting together an effective resume set of bullet points, right? So we're going to think about the reading the job ad and what that looks like and how to make sure that you're really using the job ad as the foundation for your resume so that you can really customize the resume. You're gonna hear it over and over again, but we do highly recommend that you put together a, a customized resume for each job that you're applying to. It doesn't mean that you have to totally rewrite it. The structure of a bullet point is gonna be this skill context outcome approach. So that's what we're going to be describing here. We can tell stories in the bullet points, many, many stories, because they're only small, we'll talk about that. And then I'll share obviously a few more resources out there. So let's think about what you're trying to do. I started off by talking about customization. I think things to customize in a resume are obviously different experiences that you have, right? So a resume is just basically the relevant experiences that you have for a job that you're applying to, which means that sometimes an experience that you've had is just not gonna be relevant enough to include it. So just because you've done it, doesn't mean that you have to talk about it. If you can make that experience relevant to the role, then great. But if it's totally different and disconnected, then by adding it to your resume, you're really just gonna dilute the main messaging that you're getting across. Even within sort of a, an experience section, you can reorder some of the bullet points to bring to the top those that are most relevant to the role. So sometimes I think people take a sort of a, I spent the most time doing this in this role, so I'm gonna talk about it first. But it's possible the thing that you did for 5% of the time is the most relevant aspect of your experience. And so you can also bring that to the front so that the reader sees that first. You can highlight different skills. The job description is gonna showcase skills that they're looking for. And so you can make sure that you're highlighting those. And you can use slightly different language. And what I mean by that is, if you listen to a professional talking about their experience in a role that you're interested in, they'll use language that is specific to that role or that industry. And you can use some of that language as you're customizing your own resume. So I took a random job from LinkedIn. This is a data analyst role at Pinterest. And we're gonna to go to use this just as an example, right? And so what you usually find in a job description is first of all, uh, perhaps uh, an overview of the organization and then what we want you to do in the new role and what we are looking for you to have in order for us to be interested in you. These sections are very important because the what you'll do may include things that you've never done before. And that's okay, because that's what happens when you start a new job. But you may have done things that are parallel to this. You may have used similar skills in slightly different settings. And so that's what you're trying to identify here. In terms of the what you'll do, usually here, the one that is listed at the top is probably the one that they're looking for the most. As you're putting together a job description, you know, you sit in a room and you say, what do we need from someone? And people will start throwing out ideas, but the ones that are at the top are the ones that are most top of mind. So you might want to see this as a slight priority list as you're thinking about uh, describing your skill sets. So you won't have everything in the what you'll do section, that's fine. You won't also have everything in the what we're looking for section, but obviously the more that you have, the more compelling a candidate you're going to be. So you really want to make sure that you've identified things that they are listing that you do have, but don't worry if you don't have everything. If you have about 70% of it in most cases, you know, you're probably perfectly fine to apply. What I've done here in the what you'll do is I've tried to capture some of the skills, let's say, that they're identifying. So measuring things, measuring the impact of things, doing a really deep analysis of something, partnering, collaborating with people, designing experiments, again, working with, working with teams, so that collaboration aspects, creating actionable insights. So that's just making recommendations and then working cross-functionally, right? And so one of the first things that you'll want to do with any job description is make sure that you understand the language, right? Do you know what cross-functional means in this context? This is a great opportunity to leverage the alumni network and find people who are in these roles and say to them, look, I'm seeing this word in the job description, cross-functional. What does that mean in your experience, right? And that's gonna give you the ability to be able to say, well, actually I have done something like that. I'm not gonna use that word because it makes no sense, but I, I can describe a similar situation. At the bottom here are the questions that you should be asking yourself, right? Have I done these things? Have I, for example, come up with recommendations from my own research that suggest what I should do next? Because those are actionable insights, right? Have I collaborated with different people in different disciplines? Because that's what working with different teams looks like in this context. So if you can match some of your experiences, then that's gonna be a driving force for the bullet points that you're putting together. From the other side of what we're looking for, as I said, this is more important to focus on to say, well, have I covered these in my bullet points? Again, they're looking for information on, you know, analyzing data, working in a fast paced, changeable environment, manipulating large data sets, using different types of software or tools to do the analysis, having good attention to detail. You know, attention to detail is one of those things that I think is important because if you have a sloppy looking resume because you have misaligned bullet points or punctuation that's inconsistent, that's not really great attention to detail. And that's, you know, on a two page document. And if you can't get attention to detail on a two page document, 
then you know what are you going to do in a big data set of of thousands of millions of data points? So uh, you know these small things are important to to pay attention to. Team player, cross functional. Again, they're using these words. You need to understand what that looks like. You then have to use this as a guide and sort of say, you know, how I do I have these things? Now, in the case of the what we're looking for, there probably isn't quite the same priority. The first thing isn't always the thing that they're looking for the most. Certainly, if you can put together a sort of a mosaic of skills that match this and identify those in your resume, then you're, you're on the right track. These are the questions that you can ask yourself here about, well, where have I done that? And, and obviously, you can't just repeat what they say. You can't just say, analyze data in research projects as part of a collaboration, because there's not really enough information there to know what type of data or how complex were those data or what tools did you use to do the data and how big was the team and was it a team of people just like you or, or a team of people across different disciplines? Do you need a little bit of descriptions to make sure that you're not just saying exactly the same things that they are saying, but you're adding to that? We'll talk about applicant tracking software very briefly at the end, but as you apply for a role, one of the first things that happens is you know, the software scans keywords from the job description, keywords from your resume, and it does a match of those. And if the match is too low, then it's possible that a human doesn't actually look at your resume, you just get kicked out. Because if you only match 20% of the, the keywords from the job description, they may not see that as being a great application. The so matching keywords is great. You just can't parrot back exactly what they say and hope that's enough. You're going to have to add some context. And that's what we're going to talk about today. As I said, the, the idea of learning about what it's actually like to work in a, a particular role or a particular company is going to be so helpful as you write your resume, because the more you know about what skills are valued by that organization or the type of challenges that they face that your, these skills are helpful for, the easier it is for you to tell stories about your own experiences using the language that you're hearing in this case, you know, alumni talk about in those similar roles, right? So you ask them, what are the skills that you value? What are the challenges that you face? When they give you their answer about their own experiences, be a very active listener here and sort of take that down and say, well, how can I use similar language? Or how can I find a similar type of experience that I've had in my own work, in my own research to illustrate that skill in action? So the more that you can invest in having these conversations with alumni and learning about their perspective, uh, obviously the better off you'll be there. So then skill context outcome is at, when you get to the actual bullet point, right? So you're a PhD student at Penn or a master's student at Penn or you're an intern at this organization. What comes next is going to be the bullet points, right? And so this is just an example of a bullet point. Collaborated with four students from three disciplines to develop a more effective way to scrape data on climate change from government databases using Python and receive the first place prize. So let's walk through the different sort of sections of this. First of all, we have the skill, and the skill is usually the words that come right after the bullet point, right? So you have your bullet point, and then the next few words are the skill that you're trying to showcase. So in this case, what I'm highlighting here is the collaboration that I can have with people from different disciplines, right? That is the primary skill. Now, obviously, as you look through the bullet point, there are secondary skills here as well. Right? The secondary skill here is obviously the fact that I can scrape data using Python, and that might be critically important to, to bring to the forefront. And we'll, we'll talk about how you can rearrange these in just a second. The context here is scraping data on climate change from government databases. Now, if you are applying for a job where climate data or government databases is a key part of that role, then you want to expand on the context because it's going to be directly relevant to the role. But let's say you aren't going into a role where you know climate data or government databases are key. Maybe you are applying for a consulting role. Then you don't necessarily have to go into a lot more detail about exactly what type of data it were or what type of uh, databases they were because those descriptions may not be relevant to your audience, right? They may be very relevant to the audience where you're doing this research, but outside of that, they may be less important. As the context of your experience matches the role, feel free to expand. As the context doesn't match, focus more on the skills that you use to do this and not on the context itself. And then we have the outcome. And the outcome here obviously is you know, I made this one up, so it sounds great. First praise prize, national competition. The outcome is important because it showcases how effective your skill is. If you have an effective collaboration where you're managing all these things and you get first place prize, then it suggests that your collaboration is indeed very effective. So anytime that you can have an outcome, it's really great to showcase in a more objective way the skill that you have. Because obviously you say, oh yes, I'm an effective collaborator, but but everyone should say that. Everyone should advocate for their skills. But if you can point to an objective outcome or a result, then that's going to be more convincing to the reader because now it's not just you saying that you're a great collaborator. There's evidence to suggest that you are a great collaborator as well. 
these are the different ways to sort of break down a bullet point to make sure that, first of all, the relevant skill is highlighted. So that skill at the beginning should be the skills that you're pulling from the job description. The context is there to make it meaningful, because again, if you just said collaborated on data and won first prize, it wouldn't mean anything. People couldn't really remember that. And then the outcome, just to make sure that you're really highlighting the skill as being effective. What that means in terms of how you can organize your bullet points in your resume is that there's not one bullet point for every experience that you have, right? You may decide that in based on the experiences that you have, you can reorient and rearrange different bullet points to make sure that you're highlighting different skills for different roles or different jobs or different organizations. And so this is why we tend to recommend people not try to make a one-size-fits-all resume and spend a lot of time perfecting that because every time you get a job in front of you, you're going to be changing your resume to reflect that particular job. So in this case, I'm just going to walk through sort of different variations of the same bullet point, right? So this case, this is the one we just talked about. We collaborated with students. So the, the primary skill is collaboration. But I can reorganize the same experience and say use Python to develop an algorithm to scrape data on climate change as part of a four-person team, right? So in this case, the collaboration has been shifted to the end of the bullet point. It's being deprioritized in terms of what I'm trying to sell. And the using Python, my technical skills, has been brought to the forefront. And so if they really want someone who can have these, to use these technical skills, then obviously I want to bring those to the forefront to make sure that they are there. Generally speaking, if you can have one skill per bullet point or one primary skill per bullet point, that's going to be most effective. If you list a lot of skills, a set up collaboration and then developed algorithm and then had good communications and then presented data, that long list of skills tells a less impactful story because it's just like a long shopping list at that point. And as the reader, you can't really picture these particular skills in action. This goes back to this idea that with the resume, what you're trying to do is help the reader visualize you in their mind, right? They only have the words on the piece of paper in front of them, so they should be rich enough so that people can really see how those experiences come to life as they're reading it. Here's one more version of the, the same bullet point. So in this case, if I were applying to a government agency, then I might prioritize my knowledge of these federal databases and my ability to get data out of them quickly. Again, if it was a, a federal job, then making sure that people know that I could do that, or if I was being a consultant working with government agencies, then I might prioritize that part of the experience over the other ones, or at least have a separate bullet point that showcases my experience with that. A couple of things to, to focus on in terms of the resources that we have. We have a new resource on our website called Big Interview. They do have a video curriculum on resumes that you can take a look at. The Vault Resume Guide is just a nice general guide giving you an overview of resume approaches. One thing you'll learn, obviously, is that people will give you different advice about resumes and they'll say different things and they'll say this, you should use this format or this format. But it's OK, because, you know, at the end of the day, you're, the hiring manager and the roles that you're applying to, these will all be different people and they'll all have different ideas about their own resumes. And maybe they have a terrible resume and they judge other people on their own terrible resume. So you can't really control any of that. But what you can control is how you're getting across a relevant message to your audience. So understanding your audience, understanding what they care about, understanding the job description, doing some networking to understand the nature of the, the roles that you'd be going into, and then creating a really nice, strong narrative that prioritizes the skills that are most relevant is, is critical. We talked about targeted resume. So this is a tool that you can use that kind of matches the applicant tracking software that organizations use. As you apply for a job, they're going to scan keywords in the job description. They're going to scan the keywords in your resume, and then they're going to match those keywords. And if the match is high, then you may move on to the next stage and be interviewed. If the match is very low, then the software may just boot you out and sort of reject you because that's probably not going to be a good use of the, the hiring team's time to look at a resume that's not a good match. The software tends not to look at cover letters. People like to customize cover letters over resumes, but the software usually just scans the resumes. You really want to make sure you've customized your resume and your cover letter. So you can throw in a sample job description, you can throw in your resume into this targeted resume tool, and then you can see what percentage match you have in your keywords and then you can work on sort of uh, matching that. And you can do that unlimited times with multiple jobs and multiple resumes, so it's a really handy tool. If you're a PhD student, there are some great sample resumes for different types of roles on the Versatile PhD, which is a resource that we subscribe to through Career Services so that you can access that premium content. So take a look at that. You'll see sample resumes that PhDs have submitted on for different roles that they've applied to. If you're in the humanities and social sciences, Imagine PhD also has sample resumes and annotated resumes that picture how your resume matches a job description. And that's a really great tool and resource to look at as you're, as you're putting those together as well.